Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So I'm back out here on the training pitch, gonna get an individual session in today. And I know some of you mentioned you want some drills tailored towards specific positions. Just so you know, I am a winger, so a lot of my training sessions do revolve around that position. But I have put some other training sessions on the channel, specific to other positions, center back, midfielders. So I've put a playlist on the screen right now, it's the training playlist. You will find a training drill suitable to your position, goalkeepers included as well. So just bear that in mind. You can check out the rest of the channel and you will find some drills. But I'm going to get into a full individual training session today tailored towards my own position which is a winger. So the drills that I'm going to incorporate today are going to involve some explosive speed with and without the ball. Got a crossing drill for you as well which involves a bit of dribbling too. Got a finishing drill but as I always do I'm going to get into my warm-up then we'll get into the session. So let's go. So as you guys know because I include it in pretty much every single video now I always start my training sessions with a thorough 10 minute warm-up and you guys should be doing the same especially on the sessions when you're going to be doing some explosive movements when you're going to be striking the ball any kind of training session when your muscle fibers are going to be contracting really aggressively because that's a quick way to get injuries if you don't prepare the body beforehand so this is what i do every time i go through some dynamic movements back and forth changing up the directions trying to replicate some of the different movements i might encounter during the training session and not only is this going to prevent injury but your warm-up actually allows you to get so much more out of your training session if you can fire up those muscle fibers they're going to be more explosive you're going to be a lot more efficient and explosive through the drills and you're going to get better results so there is no excuse not to do a warm-up a to prevent injury but b it's also a part of your performance as well then i always incorporate some muscle activation exercises as well as you saw in the last video i actually snapped my previous one so i had to get some more so you can just go on google type in exercise resistant bands and you're going to find loads of them hundreds of options just find the cheapest ones i always try to get in packs of two or three because they will break eventually if you're using them often because they're essentially just big rubber bands so they're not going to last forever but they're so effective for muscle activation so these are a bunch of different exercises that I do at the start of my training session. Just really gets those hard to reach muscle fibers that you won't get during your warm up. So then I moved into an explosive speed activity working without the ball just to get those fast twitch fibers as activated as possible. So I've got two gates lined up either side of these two poles in the middle here. And if you don't have poles, you can use cones, but it is a little bit more materialistic to use poles because when you are dodging and weaving in between defenders, your entire body has to move in between them, not just your feet. So you can use cones, but just remember it is a little bit more effective to use poles if you have access to them. So we start at either gate, we explode to the middle with a nice acceleration, and then we're moving laterally in between the poles, so involving a little bit of agility and deceleration. So you have to slightly slow down to get in between there with control. And then we're continuing our run, so accelerating once again. Very good movement, especially for wingers. So I went through this one 12 times, so six reps. So one rep is there and back, and I went through that six times, so it ended up being 12 total runs. Then I set up this crossing activity that involves some tight control dribbling as well. So as you can see, I've got four cones here. I dribble sharply around the first two, keeping the ball as close to my foot as possible. And then the final two cones have formed a gate. So I'm dragging the ball back towards me after turning sharply on the ball and then dragging it back, flicking it through that gate and then continuing on to cross the ball into the target area that I've set up in the box there. So just working on trying to get some consistency. I've placed the two lacrosse goals, as you can see, at the back post so I'm aiming for anywhere in that penalty area between the six yard box and the penalty area this is a very dangerous area to put the ball when you're crossing it so that's the area I'm aiming for so if it bounces just before the goal it's absolutely fine but ideally want it to land in that goal as often as possible so just working on some real tight control with the ball as you can see trying to take a touch of the ball with every step that I take being very sharp around those turns trying to keep as close to those cones as possible and then when I do that final move really explode onto the ball to get that cross off as quickly as possible it's almost like i've done a move on a defender and now you want to explode away before they have time to recover so you can make your next move get that cross in
Then I moved to the opposite side of the pitch to work on another crossing activity, this time delivering the ball into the box with my left foot. Again, using the same target areas, I've put them at the back post. So aiming for the area between the six yard box and the penalty area, this time with my left foot, because as a winger, I could end up on the right wing or the left wing, depending on my coach, depending on my team's tactics. So I want to be able to deliver crosses with both feet. So this time I've set up the cones in a straight line, so working on some dynamic ball mastery, weaving in between those cones using the inside and outside of my feet, and then I'm pushing the ball through that hurdle at the end, so having to be really precise with that touch, and then getting to the end line, crossing that ball in either along the ground or trying to get it in the air, but mainly aiming for the area where the two lacrosse goals are. So obviously my left foot's not gonna be as good as my right foot, the quality isn't quite as good, but trying to remain as consistent as possible still, get the ball into those areas to provide value for my teammates. So for each of these crossing activities, I went through it around 20 times, so just getting a good amount of repetitions to build that muscle memory. And as you can see, I'm actually performing these drills in those areas of the pitch that I will actually find myself in during a match, so that when it comes to the match situation, I've rehearsed it so many times that it's almost automatic. I'll be so familiar crossing in the ball from these areas that hopefully it'll be consistent enough so that I can provide good quality crosses during a match as well. Then I moved into this very simple finishing activity, very specific for wingers. And I've called this one the Iron Robin drill because this is something he would do all the time. So this is the setup. I'm actually on the edge of the 18 yard box cutting into the box from that line there. So it's a bit closer range. We're going for accuracy over power with the shots we wanna be finding that far corner. So we're nudging the ball towards that first pole, slightly cutting it to the inside, but only just half a yard or so, and then trying to snap that shot off as quickly as possible. So if you look up Iron Robin's goals against Barcelona, against England, he would do this a lot, where he'd get the ball in the box, nudge the ball towards the defender, and because that defender doesn't want to commit a foul, they're not lunging in for the tackle, they're just trying to jockey him, and then he'll nudge the ball towards them with very close control, cut the ball slightly inside, just half a yard or so, and then really quickly get that shot off. You want to minimize the time between that cut to the inside and the shot. It just gives that defender less time to recover or block that shot, and more chance of you finding space to find that far post. So I went through this one probably at least 40 times getting loads and loads of repetitions in because I want to make it as automatic as possible when I'm in these situations. Really working on the accuracy of that touch to the inside just to create enough room and then bending it far post. So those two poles are acting as defenders and you're trying to squeeze the shot in between those two poles and find that far post whether it's bottom corner, top corner, both are going to be very dangerous and hard to save for the goalkeeper. Alright guys, that's going to be it for the session today, always like to finish on a high note if I can, but there's just some drills, very specific for wings that are really going to help you improve your game, lots of tight dribbling, sharp control, good explosive movements as well, things like this are just going to replicate the match situations, so that if you do them over and over again you're going to develop that muscle memory and it's going to become second nature automatic during a match. So make sure you incorporate these into your own training sessions, drop any questions you might have in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to as many of them as I possibly can but as always if you did enjoy today's video make sure you smash that like button hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos and i will see you guys in my next video
together.